This is Lisa Baudouin. Welcome to Lisa's chat room. No, I'm not an expert at anything. These are basic opinions due to issues that I have along with the information that I've researched. So my suggestion first is for you to go research information and then also to make an opinion of your own. But, but when you're watching this video, please understand anything you use from this video, you do so at your own risk and peril. Okay. I have to do that with every video. Sorry about that. But here we're going to be talking about my bathroom. I'm talking about reducing the chemical exposure in your home while also minimizing cleaning. So I'm going to be talking about that and then I'm going to talk about some product hacks that I do that some really cool ideas that I had that I did. So when I first purchased the house, this bathroom was atrocious. The floor was disgusting. There was cardboard and glue to the floor. So I removed that, got that clean and I used peel and stick tiling and then I sanded it down and then I painted it. Now in retrospect, peel and stick tile, it's chemicals. Everything that we buy is chemicals really if you think about it. Even woods, they have stuff in them and they're more natural of course, but paints and polyurethanes and vinyls, they all have things in them. I'm not allergic to anything but formaldehyde. So part of my issue is I need to reduce the formaldehyde in my home so that I can live and breathe. The other chemicals, of course, I don't like them and I will use them minimally so that I can do what I need to do. So the floor, what I did, I did the peel and stick floor. I used a mask and I lightly sanded it down and then I painted it. And then I used a low gloss polyurethane that I got at Home Depot. And I'll put the link below. I'm gonna kind of scuff it up a bit again and I'm just going to add a little bit of gray and see where some of the poly has overlapped. And if I put a, just a few things of gray in there, that will change that. You won't see it as much. It's tricking the eye is what it's doing. Next thing is I painted the doors white. I have a high gloss door. I use the liquid sandpaper because it's a better alternative to sanding and getting all that dust. I replaced all the doorknobs in my house with this to modernize it, except for this darn one. I haven't gotten to it, but I do have it. My kids are like, don't replace that one. But... I'm going to. I give all the things that I don't use, by the way, to Habitat for Humanity. Anything you have, blinds that you don't need anymore, doorknobs, please, please, please give them to Habitat for Humanity. You find out where your local one is in your town, and then you can find out the hours of donation. That's what I will do. I will give that to the Habitat. Now, in my closet, and I'm kind of embarrassed about my closet, but what I did was I put my towel here. I'm going to show you where I hang it when I dry it, but I put my towel here and then I have my cupboard and I painted them and lined them the light gray of the room. So my bathroom is two tone. I have the light gray and I have a darker gray. I have the light that finished here. I have a semi gloss. Whoever had this house before me, they punched holes in this wall. I'm like, what can I do? So what I did was I bucket a pre-mix grout, a nice big bucket. I put it on and then I use a wallpaper brush. It almost looks like this, only longer with a lot of little bristles. And I just took and I ran it down. So it gave me that really nice look because it's going to take me forever to try to make it smooth like that. Also too, I liked it because it became a feature wall in this room. By the way, when you do do putty or you're fixing a hole, just once you're done, take a nice warm sponge and just, it's almost set run over that and you won't see the markings as much. You don't have to slap on a lot, just a little bit. So anyway, I did this and I just ran it down and then I used that semi-gloss paint and it's just slightly darker than this paint. For this bathroom sink, I changed out this sink and I love the sink. The sink is great for a small room because it gives the illusion that it's a big sink but it's easy to walk around and it's easier to use. It's got a nice big basin. I think that it's really important to, when you're looking at rooms, to figure out your furniture is really important. If you have really big furniture in a small room, it's going to be really tough to maneuver. It's about function. It's about structure. It's also about what you want your eye to focus on. The bathroom, of course, is really about function, right? You want to be able to get in here. You want to be able to groom yourself. Then you want to be able to get out. But you also want it comfortable. So this is great. This was very difficult to put on. I had a friend help me and then what I did was just for added measure, I just put this above. The same dark gray that I'm going to just highlight this floor with, I'm going to paint this. Here I have my medicine cabinet. Now 
my medicine cabinet, it was a 1950 medicine cabinet. It was horrible. So what I did was I pulled that out and got rid of that. It wasn't even good enough to give to Habitat. And then on the inside, it was kind of cute. There was a picture of a woman. And so what I did was I built me just a little tiny shelf right here. I used tiny little L brackets to hold it up. And then I did that same design here. And then I just bought just little tiny strips. So, but then I built these doors, made them, and then I ordered the glass pieces already pre-cut because I didn't want to mess around with that. And so when you open it up, it looks like this. And then I added these magnets right here. So it would stay shut. So next is, here I have a thing for a, a towel. You can use this, this is fine if you buy towel holders like this, but I'm gonna guarantee you it's so much nicer to have it on here because it stays. Otherwise you put it on there and it falls off. And I mean, it's just a pain, especially a hand towel. So this is a really great idea. And then you can see I've moved it. And I'm actually gonna be doing touching up too when I do the floor. Here, I added a paper towel holder. And this is just another contraption from Menards. Very inexpensive. So I would do that if I were you. And it says dry your hands with paper towel. So what am I doing here? First of all, I'm minimizing the cleaning time. And actually, I take my hand towel out of here when I have guests. Think of COVID-19, sicknesses, and whatever. I make sure that I don't have it in here so that they don't use my hand towel. Think of a family when your kids are sick or you're sick. It's just advice. And again, you do this at your own risk and peril. But to me, having that paper towel up there, if somebody's sick, they use the paper towel until they feel better. If COVID, if they've got a flu, if they've got any symptoms, if they're carrying in viruses. So this is a really great hack. And really, honestly, I bought many paper towel holders in my life, and I like this the best. It's never done me wrong. I just hooked it up to this. This was here, by the way, but I hooked it up to that, and I've had it here since. And so even when I don't feel good, I'll use the paper towel. Next thing is this here and my lights. So I use the existing light fixture, and I just painted it gray, and I have the light bulbs in there. I only have one light that comes on because I think having more than one light coming on in a bathroom, especially this size, is overkill. I don't personally need it. And this thing here, my plan is to make a door for this. Why? So when someone comes into my home, or if I come into my home and I have formaldehyde on me, it's not gonna get in there. And I'm gonna be able to easily clean this instead of having to go in and constantly dust inside there. Now, the bad thing about my bathroom is there's no venting system. So I just use that little fan there. And then here, you turn that on, the fan comes on. <laughs> so that was my fix. Now, We Energies has a program where you can get free things. Every year you can get some free things, and I think that's what this is from. This was actually brown, and I used the liquid sandpaper, and I painted it white, along with the frame and along with the woodworking below. Now, behind my door, I wanted something very simplistic. Something artsy, but not too much. So I made this. I'm trying to think of where I got the idea. And honestly, sometimes I just come up with ideas. I'll see something similar and then I'll just extrapolate on it and do something more. I love this a lot. I love wire work. I'll pause and I'm going to show you some wire work that I do in the other room. Hold on. So I'm in my kitchen right now and this is one of the wire works that I do. My plan was to move in here and get this house done work on me for a while. I love hand painting things. I love crafts. I just love this. And I actually have one here too. It is a great gift. It's a little time consuming. It's all wire work with beads. It's not that expensive to make, especially if you buy the beading in bulk, but it is time consuming to make them, but it's so pretty. They are beautiful. And I've given them as gifts. This is my hand painted glass here and here. And here, it's all over my house. And here, that, that's actually one of my favorites right there. And then that, of course, is my favorite. And I've actually got the frame done for this. I talk about this in another video. I've got the frame and I'm almost ready to put that up. But we're back in the bathroom because that's what we're talking about today. I just want to tell you that. A lot of people say, God, you're just artistic and smart. And I'm a problem solver. You know, I have the mental conditions and I have to solve problems some people, they can solve problems really fast and it takes me a while, but I have this way that I do it. I call it wiggling the thumb, go watch my videos. And so I use that and 
I'm always, like I said, placeholders. I put something in place and say, next time I get to, I'm going to do something more. Or maybe I'll have a different idea. It's like, wait, why don't I do this instead? So this is a really great idea in the bathroom behind the door because it's like, what do you put behind a bathroom door that's so close to the wall? You hang clothing here. People are walking in and out of your bathroom or coming into your bathroom and that clothing is going to attract the chemicals in the clothing that you have on. If you have gone somewhere and you have formaldehyde or chemicals on you from the exposure of other things and other people out in the world. And please go watch the videos. Start with the one that I'm going to link below. We're going to move over to the shower and then we'll do the window and then I'm done. Okay. So shower. Very cool what I did. I love, love, love what I did. I did get this idea as far as the contact paper from a gal on the internet. I will try to find her and link her below. But basically what I did was I ran the contact paper this way. She had run it that way. Then I hand painted sponge painting. And then what I did was I took the rest of the white contact paper and I made flowers. What I did was I polyurethaned it. Now I used the stuff from Home Depot, but this time I used the high gloss. So you can see the difference between that and that. And behind there is the brown ceramic tile. Next thing I did was I put strips around the whole shower structure. This is a great hack when you don't have a lot of places for towels. Here I've got my brush that I wash myself off with and I need to get new supplies, but you can see what I've done. Now here is a water filter. I did have the ones that you screw on right onto the shower and then you have to screw it. They're just round ones. I didn't like it. I couldn't get it on tight enough. And then once you take it off, then you got to do it again and try to get it tight so that the water doesn't leak. It was such a mess. So I purchased this instead. And so now what happens is all I got to do is unscrew this and replace this. And I can guarantee you that my skin is really, really soft. It helps to remove some of the chemicals out of the water as far as I know. Go and research that yourself and find the one that you like that you can afford. I think it's worth it. As you can see, the shower head is really, really high. This is the shower I bought. And so I have two shower holders and I bought this one first. I think this was like $6 at Menards. And then I bought this one too. Now, the reason I have this one is for like when I'm cleaning the bathtub and the shower, I don't want to stick it up there. It's going to run all over my hands. But the main reason is because I have a little granddaughter and then I have other grandchildren too. If they come here and they need to take a shower or something, they're staying over and they want to get cleaned up. This is perfect for a child, my opinion. And again, you do things at your own risk and your own peril. But my opinion is I would rather have my child take a shower than a bath because in a bath, they're just sitting in that dirt and grime. And unfortunately, with the formaldehyde and the chemicals and whatnot, they really need to be washed off. Everything from head to toe. Don't put conditioner on your hair, wash your body, and then wash out the conditioner. Don't do that. <laughs> While you've got the conditioner in your hair, wash your face and your ears, rinse it out, and then do it again, okay? <laughs> because it's really stuck in there, this formaldehyde. It's like a resin. And again, I talk about that in other videos. Again, that's my opinion. So to me, personally, this is a great buy. It's under 10 bucks. I think I got this as well at Menards. That I got years ago. I'm not sure if they even have it. It is a suction one, but as you can see, I just put a screw in it. This is where I hang my towel when it dries, right? Now, my suggestion is once it's dry, to put it into a closet. And that's what I did here. I hung mine in a closet. Because again, if guests are coming into my home, or even me, when I come home, I immediately take a shower when I come home. I get that stuff off of me most of the time. And I will, again, go about... Uh, talking about that in my other video about cleaning. But here I'm just going to hang my towel to dry and then put it away. And this is a great idea. And actually too, like if you have children, you could have one down here. Here I have a plastic curtain and I don't really want that, but I would rather have that than cloth because cloth really attracts dirt. And also too, this is easy to clean. I clean it with a duster. And then once in a while I take it off and I put it into the washing machine and I wash it. So finally, the next thing I want to talk about, the final thing is this window. Now this window has been a pain for a long time. And the reason is because if I open up the blinds, it's so bright in here, you can't see. I don't know if it's the window itself. It's just the way that the sun 
passes by every day. There's a point where it's like so brilliant all day long till about two o'clock. So here's some of the hacks I'm doing. First of all, I did have a blind in here that wasn't as good. It didn't darken. So I put up this blind. Guess what happened? I started having reactions. What does that tell me? That tells me that this, not this, but this nylon or whatever this is that has some type of preservative has been used probably in the whole thing. But in here, this is what's causing my issues. And the other day I was in my office, which is right around the corner here. I was going crazy. I'm like, what is this? I had just put it up. <laughs> I'm like, shoot. But I know because I'm a barometer. So when you buy brand new items like this, my suggestion is to soak them in the bathtub for a good hour or two. Just fill up your bathtub and put this in there, opened up wide in an hour or two, I'll take in get that out of there. I'll completely rinse everything. I'm going to have to throw it in there. So, but before I do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually remove this. Look at, this is all just extra stuff to clean plus extra threading. And it looks, it looks wonky. I love that word wonky. On the window part up here, I will take a piece of cardboard. I will line it. It's a window. You're going to get condensation. So I would use black plastic and I will put it up there. I will make sure that it's plastic all around because I don't want the condensation from the window getting in. That will help to minimize this exposure to light. And I like light, don't get me wrong, but not where I can't see. <laughs> so I can come in here and sh 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 clean those blinds with my duster, which my duster gets into all of the nooks and crannies. Can clean the curtains. I'm keeping the curtains because I love the curtains. And to me, what I do is I'm into a room and I say, Okay, how much time does it take for me to clean this room? And then what I do is I make a plan to minimize that cleaning time. I look at things and think, okay, what can I put away that really doesn't need to be out? And then what can I do? Like building a frame and putting a door on here. So then it's minimized. It's not going to get any kind of dust on it, any kind of chemical exposure to me or anybody else. But I do clean. Don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean I'm not going to clean it forever. I do have a cleaning routine. So the final thing I wanna say is the dust also gets above. So I'm going to be making a ledge balance for above there. And that will help quite a bit for as far as dust goes down because I actually dust my ceilings. And again, just like a shower, I go at the top down to the ground and then I vacuum. And I sometimes I'll do it twice because sometimes this stuff is it's just floating in the air. If you look at dust coming through the sunlight, you can see it. So sometimes I'll do it twice and actually it doesn't take that long. For me to clean my bathroom now, it takes me about 10 to 15 minutes tops, if that, because of the strategies I put in place. However, my bathroom is still comfortable. It still has some art in it. It has functionality in it. The paper towel holder, the way to put your towel here, I'm 60 years old. Take my advice. This is at Menards. And if you turn it sideways, it's kind of cool that way. And once you put a towel in there, it's very pretty. So with that, that's the end of this video. I hope that you have gotten something out of it. If you have, please comment below. Also, please like, subscribe, and share all my videos. All right. So please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again next time in Lisa's chat room.